Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Almighty God, the guide of our Lord Jesus Christ, may He guide our thoughts, may He give us direction for our lives, so that our lives can serve Him here on earth until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we have been talking about those who are born of the flesh. Those who are born of the flesh do not understand those who are born of the Holy Spirit. Those who are born of the flesh, they, unfortunately, are flesh. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a type of archbishop. He was a very important man, very influential, very rich, a man with a great knowledge in theology of the Torah, of the prophets. He was a man, let's say, perfect in the eyes of men, in the eyes of the flesh, of those who are born of the flesh. A man who was holy because he knew the law really well, the law of Moses, the commandments, the prophets, the Psalms. However, when he met the Lord Jesus, he did not understand the language Jesus spoke. Why? Because even though he was a very important person in the Jewish community, amongst the religious people, he was the main of them. He was the, a prince amongst the Jews, one of the main ones, respected and so on. And he was a very sincere man. Despite of it all, he was still born of the flesh. He was born of the flesh. And he could not understand the language of the Lord Jesus because he was born of the Spirit. And that's how people in the world are. You may have a lot of knowledge in theology. You may be perfect in the knowledge that the world has given us. But if you are not born of the Spirit, you are flesh. And because you are flesh, you will not understand the things of the Spirit. But those who are born of the Spirit, understand, comprehend those who are born of the flesh, because one day they were also born of the flesh. I was flesh once. I know what it's like to be flesh. But today I am spirit. Jesus was not born in the flesh. He was born of the Holy Spirit since Mary's womb. So Jesus would speak with Nicodemus that was a perfect a instructor, a master of religion, and Jesus would speak to him and he would not understand anything. The conversation, the speech of the Lord Jesus was not comprehended by him. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, pay attention. I tell you, whoever is not born again cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? Why can't they see it? Because the kingdom of God is spiritual. The kingdom of God is not physical. It's not like the kingdom of Israel or the kingdoms of this world. The kingdom of God is spiritual. And only those who are born of the Spirit that will be able to see the kingdom of God. And there is more. After saying this, Jesus said also, Nicodemus, if you are not born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus was crazy. He went crazy. But how, Lord? And then he said, 
how can I, he didn't say himself, but he said, how can a person referring to himself after all, a man in advanced age can go back to his mother's womb and be born again? How is it possible? Not even if he was a newborn baby, he would be able to go back to his mother's womb, let alone a man in his age. But poor him, because he was flesh, he would understand the way he was hearing it. A person who is born of the flesh is weak. That's the problem of those who are born of the flesh. This is the problem of the world. People of the flesh don't understand anything of their spirit. They are blind. They are ignorant. They are completely dead and neutralized before the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are born of the flesh. And you know, the, the flesh is weak. Don't you know that? Very well. The flesh is weak. And when a person is born of the flesh, they are weak. And all of us were born of the flesh until the day in which we have an encounter with God and through the Holy Spirit, we are then born spirit. Meaning, let me explain that to you. In my case, for example, I was born of the flesh until the Holy Spirit convinced me of my sins because I didn't think I was that bad of a sinner anyways. And once I was convinced of my sins by the Holy Spirit, I went desperate. I truly repent from my sins. And I said, how can I save myself? And that's when the Holy Spirit introduced me, Jesus, his son, who died for my sins. And then I gave all of myself before the Lord Jesus. And then he saved me. He delivered me from that burden from hell of all my sins. And from then on, I received peace, peace with God and above all with myself. I received peace, meaning I was born again, not out of philosophy or, or religiousness. No, I was generated by the Holy Spirit that happened to me. And from then on, I didn't want to do anything else but to bring to others like yourself watching me now that which God had given me. I just want to give you what God has given me. Everything God has given me, I'm passing on. I'm transferring or tried to transfer to other people. Well, whoever believes will be blessed. I have no doubt. But those who don't believe will be left behind and will continue to be flesh. And see, my friend, you know, you, you know quite well that the flesh is weak. For example, if you want to do the fast of Daniel, but in a certain moment you fall, you break the fast. Oh, come on, I shouldn't have done that. Why? Because you are still flesh. You are still in the flesh. You were born of the flesh. You were not yet generated by the Holy Spirit. But you are in the process of seeking, you are fighting. The flesh comes and moves around and then you fall. But if you persevere, if you continue fighting against this desire of the flesh, denying your flesh, then God seeing your effort, that's important. Perhaps you are weak, but God sees the effort, the dedication that you give yourself in order to receive the new nature, to receive the divine nature, which is to be spirit. Then he comes upon you, but it, it doesn't happen with everybody you know, randomly. No, it happens with those who thirst. I want the truth. I have 
the desire to know God because it's not fair for you, for example, who are watching me. You have knowledge, a lot of theory about what happened in the past, the story of the Lord Jesus, the story of Israel. You have a great knowledge of, of this, but you don't know God. You don't know the Lord Jesus. And how can you be a witness to the Lord Jesus if you don't know Him? Isn't it true? God knows that. But when you start questioning and assimilating the idea that you cannot live without knowing Him, no, I have to know you, my God. That's the thirst the Holy Spirit is giving you. He's opening your mind and making you understand the reason why the Holy Spirit is so important. To reveal to you that which you need to know so that you can act upon it and then lead you to become a new person. So, my friend, those who are born of the flesh is flesh. And those who are born of the flesh don't understand those who are born of the Spirit. You can see, for example, how many people, how much hatred I've faced or we are still facing because of pe people's jealousy, because they see the work of the Universal Church developing all over the world. How much hatred we face against us. But of course, I wouldn't expect from those who are born of the flesh, flowers or a red carpet. No, I can only expect that hatred, vengeance, injustice, injustice, slander. They call me a thief, that I take advantage of people and this and that and the other. However, you know, life goes on even if people try to stop our progress. And when I say that, I know that those who are born of the flesh who hate me will hate me even more. But what can I do? This is, this is the reality, my friend. This is the reality. When you are born, if you one day are born of the Spirit, then you will understand. Then you will go through the same process that I've been through. But this happened with the Lord Jesus as well. Everything that we face here on earth, He also faced, and even more, even more than all the humanity together in the past, present, and future has been suffering all over the world because He took upon Himself all the curse of human beings, and He was not the one to blame. He was innocent, but He embraced all the sins of all humanity but the question is, who benefits with this? Well, those who believe, and those who believe will obey. That's the reality. So, those who are born of the flesh are weak, are feeble, are corrupt, are easy to corrupt. It's a person that, I would say, has a corrupt nature. Their nature is naturally corrupt. It's not only the politicians that are corrupt. No, there are those who are not politicians, but they are corrupt. So, this is the nature of man. The nature of man, born of man, born of the flesh, that is generating flesh. But the nature of the spirit is life, is peace, is strength. Those who are born of the flesh do not have the power of faith to change the situation. Those who are born of the flesh, they have the power of the doubt, of fear, of trembling. They carry it within themselves, those who are born of the flesh. They are so weak, so weak, so weak that before being thrown to the floor and being crushed by the world, they start crushing others around them. And that's what happens in school, for example. The bullies. They bully others, the other children, because they are afraid. They are fearful. So, before being bullied, they bully others. They bully others. 
meaning they expose what is inside of them, which is weakness. So those who are born of the flesh are flesh, pure flesh, pure flesh. They are weak, they are fearful, they are coward, they are corrupt, everything that is not good because the flesh is weak. Jesus said, what is born of the flesh is flesh. There is no other way. They can be religious, they can be a master in religion, but if they are born of the flesh, they continue to be flesh with the same intentions, the same sins of those who are not religious. So, my friend, that's why Jesus came to the conclusion and said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, it's needed for you to be born again. You have to be born again, because if you are not born again, you will continue to be weak, feeble, you will continue to be who you are, and no one will be able to change that. You have to be born again. And this new birth, the process of the new birth, is the Holy Spirit who gives. And He only gives to those who are thirsty, those who want. If you are thirsty to receive the Holy Spirit, to be a new person, oh, I want to change my life, I don't accept this life, my God, I want to be born again, I want a new chance. If you have this thirst, the Holy Spirit is already moving inside of you. He is the one stirring up this thirst and hunger inside of you. And you can be sure, He will, he will visit you. He will visit you and you will be born again. And you will stop being who you are in order to be spirit or to be spiritual with the divine nature. Tomorrow we are going to be talking more about this because this is a very long subject. There is still a lot to talk about, a very rich subject, but it has to be digested little by little. If not, people you have indigestion. May God bless you all. And if you want to be born again, do the following. This Wednesday, at the night of the soul, at 6 p.m. in all the universal churches in Brazil, it's a holiday week, so the main service is going to be at 6 p.m. The main service in the sunset. At the sunset, you are our guests should be there in any universal church in the Temple of Solomon and also in Brasilia, there in the Holy Ground, also the same thing, 6 p.m., you are our guests. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.